Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, today we're going to do a little something different. And one of the questions I get asked the most on my channel, and I actually take it for granted because I've been doing it so long, is how to tear apart and clean properly your airbrush. And like I said, I take it for granted because I've been airbrushing for many, 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 many years. I've got multiple airbrushes that I've been using and I've just it, it's come so second nature to me. But today what I thought I would do, especially since we've been painting so much lately and I've got a nice dirty airbrush, actually a couple of dirty airbrushes to clean out. And what I thought I'd do is spend just like maybe 10, 15 minutes showing you how to properly take apart. Now the one we're going to be using the most today is the Iwata airbrush, but we've got one from Tamiya, one from Badger. Most airbrushes are going to disassemble very, very similar to this. Now, I would highly recommend that if you have an airbrush, look at your instructions inside and just see if there's a, a schematic that shows how it comes apart, take, you know, and just that way so you don't take something apart that you're not supposed to. Uh, I, a long, long time ago, I had an airbrush like that that I damaged because I took something apart that I wasn't supposed to. So just keep that in mind. Also, too, there are tool kits that you don't absolutely need to have. This one, I have one from Awada, and it has a whole bunch of specialty tools. Now, I admit, I very well, seldom use these right here because the most of the cleaning that you're gonna do, you can take apart with the wrench that comes in the, uh, comes in the kit, the little tiny wrench right there, and everything else can be taken apart by hand. But these tools are, if you're gonna be doing a lot of airbrushing like I do, sometimes they are necessary to get in there to take apart little things, but for the most part, we can show you how to do it without these tools. But just something you might wanna think about down the road. So, while we've got, like I said, three nice dirty airbrushes right here, let's take them apart, so let's get started. Okay, now that you've used your airbrush a whole bunch and you, you've got it nice and dirty on the inside and uh, it's time to tear it down and clean it up. Now, I've got three different airbrushes right here. The Tamiya one, a Badger 100 that I've uh, got had for about 20 something years. And then the, the Eclipse, the Iwata Eclipse that I have. And, and the reason I have the three different ones out here, I'm gonna basically show you how I tear them down. And I take it for granted sometimes that you know, I've been doing it for quite a while, and I, I get this question so, so often. And if you know it, if you know how to tear your airbrush down really well and clean it properly, that's great. But this is for all you guys out there that want just a quick and easy way to, to clean it out in a way that a is not going to be too, too messy, and and it's going to make it so you have a fun time next time you go to pull your airbrush out, it's ready to go again. So first of all, what you're going to need is I. For doing basic acrylic paints, I use this. This is available in the United States very easily. It's just a general purpose kitchen cleaner and it strips uh, acrylic paint off of an airbrush pretty well, especially when it's fresh. Now, if it's a little bit older paint or it's been you know, built up inside and you wanna give the brush a really good cleaning, I'm gonna recommend this product right here. This is, to me, is airbrush cleaner. And just to let you know, this stuff is hot. It is, it'll eat through any of the type of paints out there that I've found on the market and cleans them out very quickly and easily. It's got a very strong smell. So we're gonna have a fan blowing on us today. We've got the door open and we're ready to clean out our airbrush right there because the fumes are really, really powerful on this stuff right here. Also, another thing that is gonna come in real handy with cleaning your airbrush are these little Spray Works airbrush cleaning brush. And I've got, that's how it comes in the package from Tamiya, but I'll kind of zoom in, hopefully you can see it. It's basically a little wire brush with a little tiny area on here that's got some, some cleaning ability to it. So you could put it down into the small parts of the head to really clean it out. So we're gonna use the Iwata one since this is what we've been kind of showing you what we've been airbrushing. So we're gonna pull the back off Here's a little tip for you guys too. If you're first time or kind of new to taking your airbrush apart, and if you have a smartphone, set your smartphone up and film what you're doing so that you, you can watch back that if you can't remember how a certain part goes in, at least you might be able to figure out based on how you took it apart. So we're gonna, we're gonna strip this down completely. So we're first we're gonna pull the, the tip and the head off here. Then you unscrew this back piece here and slide the needle out. And you can see the needle is, is not coming out super easily and that's because there's been some paint buildup that is that has gone on on in here and that's what's making it not slide very easily. And then we're gonna 
before you take this next part out, go ahead and screw this back on. And that's just so you don't have lose this part. And then you can go ahead and hopefully start unscrewing this main, start unscrewing right here. And yep, I unscrewed that again. <laughs> Let's put that back on. It just keeps everything from falling apart when you pull it out. So just try just to screw that area out. Yep. Better laid plans uh, <laughs> should have happened, but. So now, Awada has done some really incredible things late recently, and this little, this little spring right here used to be a separate piece, which was sometimes a nightmare to get back in, but all your newer Awada brushes have this attached. So this little spring right here comes out, and this little, uh, this little lever right here goes in here. And basically, it would push back with this. And this is another thing I love that a wad has done. Pop this out. This little piece and the, the plunger right here were separate for the longest time, too. So what that meant was you'd have to go and basically try to line that back up and push it back inside there. And that got to be a real, let's just call it a real pain in the butt. So quickly, let's just show you what, how we're going to clean this off with the, uh, the airbrush cleaner. First thing, real simple. For cleaning off the, your, your needle, I just like to just dip this in here, shake it around a little bit, and just that quickly, it's going to pull off any of the paint that you have on your, uh, on your needle. So you might have to do it once or twice more, but uh, that was fairly fresh paint, so it came off pretty quickly and easily. Now, as you see, we pulled this piece off. This inside here is the reason we're going to need this little, this little, little uh, airbrush cleaning brush. I'm sorry, I couldn't think of what it was. And it's just because normally I will take a cotton swab like this, just dip it in the, uh, the solution here, and then we can go and clean the whole inside of this piece. And you start to pull off out of that. But the cotton swab won't go all the way inside there. So this is very helpful to get inside and just start to scour out any of the excess paint in there. And believe it or not, this is one of the most important parts of the, the brush to clean because if in, there's any lack of airflow at all, your brush isn't going to work at all. It'll start spitting. And then you also want to clean the front with the uh, cotton swab. And you can see, even, even though it looked fairly clean, you can still see there's still remnants of paint that you're still pulling out of there. And then after I clean this off, I like to go ahead and just kind of just just clean off the tip in here just to make sure nothing else is built up inside there. And since we have this, go ahead and clean inside the pot in here as well. And you can see there's even more. It looked fairly clean to me when I was sh look showing you guys, but there is paint residue build up in there. So now that you've got that part clean, go ahead and screw this on so you don't lose this piece because that's kind of an important piece. Also, you can go and clean inside the barrel here of the airbrush just to make sure there's no leftover paint because although the paint comes from the cup and it wants to flow this way every once in a while if you hold it like this a little paint will trickle back down inside here and that's what will kind of clog up your your airflow so if you guys ever get a uh, a brush that when you're pushing on this and it stays down and you and you can't control the airflow the air keeps running it's because a little paint has gone down inside here and basically if you're using acrylic paint I'll just take this kind of stuff and just spray it right down into the barrel down there it makes a little bit of a mess and kind of clean that out let it soak in there for a little while go in with a cotton swab you can get a cotton swab in this direction and just kind of clean it out in there and 99 when you can see all the extra gunk that's built up down in there. And this stuff is really, the Lysol, or if you have it in other countries, just an all-purpose kitchen cleaner. This works really good because you can just hose it off with water in the sink and does not nearly have the smell of this. In fact, once you're done with that, put the lid back on so you won't be gassing yourself out. And then I like to go down the barrel this way, just kind of clean it out in here. And you can just see even what you thought would be a fairly clean brush, because we were you know, cleaning it as we went airbrushing, we're gonna get it much, much cleaner. Now, normally, this area doesn't get too bad. There'll be sometimes a little bit of paint residue left on here. Well, we can just clean that off. And I'm gonna show you, 
try not to take these areas out. Usually this area is not, not that bad. If you have to, just take your, your towel and just clean off any excess in here. This usually doesn't, you know, interfere with the way the gun works. So then you want to slide this back on and then put this piece back on as tight as we can so we don't knock it off again. Now, once you've got this all cleaned out, you can also go ahead, if you're interested too, if you're worried that there might be a little bit left in there, you can put a little tiny bit of this stuff inside, turn your airbrush on, and run it through it, and it'll blast off quite a bit of the, if there's anything still left in the tube right in here. Okay, now that we've cleaned most of the barrel out in here and got that all nice ready to go, this area up here, I don't normally clean this out every single time we take it apart, but I thought I would show it to you, show you how to take it apart. So your, your airbrush should come with a wrench that fits specifically that piece. You want to unscrew that. And when you look inside there, there's a lot of, a lot of gunk and stuff inside, but we can go ahead and clean that out with our airbrush cleaner on a cotton swab. And you can see the, the, the gunk that builds up inside there. And you just wanna clean that out as best as possible. Also, another thing you do, because this is all metal, you can take a little bit of this airbrush cleaner, set it into a smaller little jar, and drop the piece right into it, and let it soak for a little while. And sometimes that makes it a little bit easier to clean out. But to be honest with you, this airbrush cleaner, I've noticed, just will cut through anything. So whether it's acrylic enamel or lacquer paints, just make sure you get in there really good. And, and see, even after the second one, we're still pulling out some stuff in there. So once we get that fairly cleaned out, you could also clean around here quickly just to make sure that there's no remnants of uh, paint left on there and then clean right here. That's where your air comes out and that definitely needs to be clear. So then we can go ahead and attach this back on for assembly and don't want to over tighten it too much. Just give it enough that just so it locks into place. Then we want to install our plunger, making sure that this little, little piece is hanging straight down. That used to be a separate piece, guys. That was always a lot of fun to try to get back into place. And you want to line it right up over. Oh, also, make sure that the hole for the needle to go through is going back to front. So let's see if I can get this in on the first try. Yay, I got it in. And you can see we got a little play. That means that the, uh, the spring inside here is clear and resp responding properly. Now this is the next fun part. You want to keep it with the little, little notch piece up on top. Come in at an angle, drop it right in, and you can see it falls right into place there. And you can go ahead and tighten this down without <laughs> losing that little nut on the end again. And just tighten that all the way down. Hand tightening is plenty fun, is plenty good for this. Make sure you got it like that. Check this out first. Make sure that that spring is working good. And you can see we got a nice spring action on it. Loosen this up just slightly. And what I like to do too is dip this one more time in the airbrush cleaner and slide this in. And just give it a couple of little waggles in there to make sure that there's nothing else pull it out, make sure it's still clean. Just make sure that there was nothing left inside. That little bit of airbrush cleaner will kind of clean out the whole tube in there. And lightly push this all the way to the end, and that is gonna make it seat inside the head. You don't wanna ram this too hard, because eventually you'll start to open up the head inside there, and you won't get a, a fine spraying pattern that you're used to. Give this a little tighten, and put your barrel back on the end here. And you've got a nice, clean, uh, ready-to-use airbrush. Now, I popped out the uh, the Tamiya airbrush, which is essentially a, an Awada. Now, this has got a locking trigger on it. In fact, what you can do is you can loosen this right here, and see, it'll only let it go back a little ways, or you can loosen it a lot, and you get the full use of the, uh, the airbrush on it there. But the reason I show you on that is the only thing different about the inside of the brush is this not is this piece right here which paint will never get inside of this or it shouldn't get inside of it so cleaning it will be the exact same way in fact this brush definitely needs to be cleaned because the needle is kind of 
kind of locked into place there. If it ever gets so hard that you can't pull it out, just get a pair of pliers and yank it out and then clean it exactly the same way. So I'm gonna take this one apart off camera because it's gonna come apart exactly like this one. And finally, we also have our Badger. And just briefly, I'm gonna open this one up just to show you that Look, it's basically the same parts again. They're a little bit smaller right here, but you've got this little locking nut that does the needle, which clearly needs to be cleaned off. And all of these parts work exactly the same way as the water on it. So, so that hopefully gives you guys a general idea how to take apart and clean your airbrush. Most of the time when I'm using Tamiya acrylic paint, I will, you know, I'll while the paint's still wet, we'll spray a little bit of the cleaner inside there. You know, use our finger, wash out the inside, put it under the sink, blast it through, and I'll basically we'll open up the back here, pull the needle out, run, you know, high pressure water down in through here, and that blasts out enough paint that you can move on to another color. And then once I'm finally done for the day, this is what I do: is I take it apart completely, like I just showed you how to do. Well, there you go, guys. There's a quick breakdown on how to, to disassemble and clean your airbrush properly. Uh, now, I know there's going to be a lot of guys out there, oh, I know how to do all this. But remember, there's a lot of new guys to the hobby that want the information like that. So I hopefully we helped you out. Maybe someone else who's even not done it in a while picked up a tip or two. Back to those tools. Those tools that I was showing you at the very beginning, those are only necessary that if you have a brush like this, it'll work on this one. That if parts are all glued together inside because you used enamel or lacquer paints a long time ago and you couldn't get any of the parts out. That's what those tools are for. So if you're using acrylics and if you keep your brush fairly clean, you should not have to use any of those uh, specialty tools for taking apart your brush. But, so I want to thank you guys as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming. In fact, a, another video will be coming out on airbrushing. The next one will be out will be actually on using your airbrush now that you've got a nice clean one. Thanks for watching.